Good morning and welcome to the morning coffee with John Plaza. 45 days on the confinement, still working from home and looking at market trends before the publication of heavyweight stocks such as Amazon and Apple this evening. I'm focusing on the weight of technology stocks in the S&P 500. Indeed, the far larger stocks in the S&P 500 now account for more than 20% of its total market cap, exceeding the famous 18% concentration level reached during the dot-com bubble. Those stocks are Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and of course, Facebook. The dispersion in return is clear. While the S&P 500 index is just 17% off its record high reach in February, the medium stocks is 28% below its high. While this narrow breadth, so this is an indicator of how many stocks are advancing relative to those that are declining, could last for extended periods, past episodes were followed by below average, mar average market returns and eventually momentum reversed. For example, in addition to the dot-com bubble, breadth narrowed ahead of the recession in 1990 and 2008 and the economic slowdown in 2011 and 2016. A historically sharply narrowing breadth has signaled below average one month, three months, six months S&P 500 return as well as larger than average prospective drawdowns. How long can investors expect this extremely narrow market breadth and mega concentration to last? We notice that while the median uh, uh, episode of narrow market breadth lasted in average three months. The longest period was 28 months from 1998 to 2000. Often in history, a narrow rally uh, lead to drawdowns as the handful of market leaders ultimately failed to generate enough fundamental earnings strength to justify elevated valuation and investor crowding. In these cases, the market leader catch down for weaker peers, two weaker peers. So would it be the same this year? Future will tell us. Keep on winning, read my morning, and please stay safe.